Jim Cornette gave me a break. And Jim Cornette is a very, very smart guy. I, I have all the respect and love, admiration for Jim Cornette. I can't say anything bad about Jim. Uh, he's always been more than fair with me. Gave me an opportunity when there wasn't any opportunities. So uh, I have nothing but love and respect and admiration for Jim Cornette. Do you have any uh, interesting stories about him? I have a lot of interesting stories. I don't know if I can tell publicly. I don't know if the statute of limitations works <laughs> or not. You know what I'm saying, man? And that's the truth. I, I mean, Jim was an excitable guy, man. Jim could be, and um, let me say this, Jim's a very passionate guy, and he was right, rightfully so because he, he demands perfection and he can lay out something. Jim was a guy that would write out 10-page finishes, 10-page matches. Now, and I'm not a guy that can remember anything. I mean, I had a lot of fun in the 80s and 90s and the 20s. Anyway, uh, Jim used to write things out and have everything laid out just the way he wants it. And it was up to us to pull it off. So there, were, there was a time, uh, and there's a lot of stories about Jim, but, but I don't think they're for public consumption. But there was a time when uh, Johnson City, we had a match. Uh, and it was against the Rock and Roll Express, who we'd worked with forever and a long, long, long time. And it was a match, but Jim had an angle figured out for the match. And I was up in the seats um, studying. I was studying is what I was doing. And, and I was gone for about 15 minutes. Uh, and when I came back down, Jim had destroyed his racket. He had thrown a fit because he couldn't find me. He wanted to go over the match. He wanted to go over the angle. And I was nowhere to be found. And he, and he got hot. He got mad. He got over it, but I mean, rightfully so, he was that passionate. He had to go over it right then. He couldn't find me, and he, and he was right to be mad. But uh, again, I had to study for that science project I had going on. That now, day. was it him that came up with the heavenly bodies, or was that you? No, that was Jim. Uh, but I had been a part of the heavenly bodies before in Memphis with Pat Rhodes, and Bobby Fulton gave us that name uh, in Memphis. So when Jim and Stan walked out of WCW, it was... Uh, Jim's idea to call us the Heavenly Bodies, and that was from, uh, I believe, Don and Al Green earlier days. But yeah, it was all Jim Cornette. And uh, so that started off with Stan Lane. How did it end up uh, going from Stan Lane to uh, Jimmy Del Rey? Stan Lane was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time we got together. And this was right after uh, uh, the Midnight Express with Bobby Eaton and Stan and Jimmy. Uh, had their run in WCW and things just weren't going right and Stan and Jimmy decided to walk out. The original plan was for um, Stan, Jimmy, and Bobby to walk out and Jimmy was going to open up uh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling and uh, going to have the Midnight Express rock and roll angle all over again. But uh, Bobby was given a contract, had guaranteed money, he had a family, so Jimmy said, no, you stay, we'll leave. So uh, Jim called me at the time I was working in Memphis, Tennessee with the Jarretts uh, and said, I have this opportunity and this is what we're going to do. Rick Rubin was the backer, the money guy, he was a silent partner. Uh, so it was great on paper, it was just the time that it was happening, the business was changing. But Stan was living in Charlotte at the time and that's kind of a commute uh, for the money we were guaranteed going to be making for that week. Uh, for him to make and he was uh, he had already been through that Experimental time in his career and he, he had been through that big run in uh, WCW and I just don't think his heart was in it as much to make that those long shots and have to get a hotel and And have to do what he had to do uh, on that end of the territory. So uh, Stan decided to quit So that's it. And we were really in a bind. We didn't have anybody that there wasn't a whole lot of people out there to choose coming to be my partner and uh, I knew a lot of people but they were all with WCW or WWE. So Jimmy Del Rey was in Florida and uh, Kevin Sullivan recommended him. Kevin Sullivan knew he was a great worker, a good guy and Kevin kind of owed Jimmy a little bit. Um, so we contacted Jimmy and he came in and a lot of people looked at him and said no, don't think so. But once he came in and uh, he started working and found out, man, we found out he was a hell of a worker. And he, he really knew what he was doing in the ring. So uh, that, that's kind of how that came about. And as we, as we went on, uh, we, we found out that he 
He knew his stuff.